things are working here again. Let me get things lined up over here. All right. All right. Well, right at the last moment, right, like, I think it was probably, right um, moment, oh, let me turn right, this down. Like, I think it was probably, um, my wife comes in, tells me there's no internet in uh, her room. And uh, that should have gave me a clue that there was a real problem. And uh, as it turns out, uh, we lost internet on everything like uh, five minutes before this was supposed to go live. So we're live now and it appears everything's working fine. Um, yesterday, if you were here, we digitized. Oh, by the way, my name is George Myhall. This is the Office of Image Archaeology. This is uh, my um, playground in the past. It's where I live most of the time in history. Um, yesterday, we digitized this film here. It was um, a film called The Mask or I'm sorry, Mask Maker. Uh, it features Marceau Marseille. Um, I think that's how you say his name. Say his name. Uh, 1975 Encyclopedia Britannica film in very bad condition. It has a lot of sprocket hole damage and, um, and uh, it, been, it has been repaired. And yesterday uh, we, um, we cleaned the film on uh, this uh, equipment right here and here. I'll swing the camera over so that you can see that. Let me see here. Okay, um, on these uh, two gray items right here, that's part of um, a, uh, a system. You take the film from this side, automatic rewinds is what it is. Take the film from this side and you put a reel on the other side. This is eight millimeters, so it wouldn't work, but put it on the other side over here and you run the film through, and um, you use uh, I use microcloth uh, to uh, clean the the uh, film. Um, and uh, again, just uh, to show you some of the, uh, let's see if I can pull up some of the damage on here real quick. Just as a little refresher here. Huh? I can probably. Oh, I'm getting there. Almost there. Um, Okay, so this white area that you're seeing right here on the edge of the film, this white area, that's, uh, that's been uh, uh, repaired. And it's, so it, um, the sprocket holes were really damaged really badly. On the other side, you can see, let me see if you can see, you can see kind of a, a bit of a st uh, stripe area on, uh, on this side over here, and that's the, uh, uh, optical sound and of course these are the individual frames and uh, now we'll just wind this back up here real quick this machine is actually electric electrically operated it'll go that direction um, it'll go to the uh, to, to the right over here uh, uh, electrically with the electric motor in here, and it's operated by a foot pedal down below, and you have uh, um, uh, reverse and uh, forward uh, to, uh, but it, it only it only works really one direction. The yellow knob is a uh, clutch of sorts, and then on this side over here, we have a brake, and then an, uh, um, a uh, manual um, handle to go ahead and turn the film back this direction. So, at any rate, so that's, that's uh, the film that we've got going on. Let me go ahead and put the camera back again. And um, let me zoom in just a little bit here, I think. Okay, so what we're looking at is, uh, this is Marcel Marseille. And uh, what I'm going to do, it, <clears throat> as it turns out, this film is, uh, as I really get into it, is in such bad condition that uh, I, will, I, I will not be posting it to, you, uh, to my channel. And that's uh, for a couple of reasons. One is its, its condition on my end, but also 
uh, after doing some research, there is somebody out there that has a much cleaner, much better quality um, uh, image. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, okay. So I just want to make sure things are still happening here. <laughs> um, but he, they have a, a much cleaner film, so I'm going to uh, 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 let folks that are interested in, in uh, this, this character uh, go there to, uh, to take a look at him. But meanwhile, we're going to um, take a look at the, uh, the, the uh, film, and uh, what we want to do is we want to... Um, I mentioned this last night. I didn't really finish my thought, but I, I have uh, Amazon Prime. And um, I only have Amazon Prime because I use it for shipping. But every once in a while, we'll go there to take a look at a, a, a film. And uh, what I've noticed is, is that a, mil a multi-billion dollar company that is in control of the films that they post on their, on their site cannot seem to get the audio and video in sync in many of their movies. Uh, I very seldom ever go there, as I said, but that really turned me off completely, and so now I don't go there at all. I pay the $100 a year sh simply because of the uh, shipping. All of the uh, um, uh, brick-and-mortar stores have been run out of business by places like Amazon, but you can't help it. I, I need to buy things here in Sacramento, and uh, the store is my favorite, uh, Fry's Electronics, is gone. So. I'm forced to um, rely on places like Amazon, but certainly not for their Amazon Prime movie thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to sync this. First, we're going to, um, uh, it's uh, actually I've already um, unlinked it, but I'll, all right, so we're going to unlink it so that we can move the, uh, the video and uh, the sound independently of one another, soundtrack independently of one, of one another. So you can go ahead and you can go back and forth wherever you want to. So that's where it was. And what we're going to do is we're going to find out where he first starts talking. And this is this is a knack that you get after a while. But boy, I'm telling you, it, it uh, it's, it's sometimes it's just not easy. Especially he has an accent, and I I kind of uh, read lips. So his accent is not going to really help me a lot. Uh, in doing this, but we'll see what happens. All right, so he starts talking right there, and actually he, because he's, he really, um, you can really tell when he starts. Right there, right about there. I think that's probably, that's probably the, where the first sounds issue from his mouth. So we'll, we'll put a mark right there and a keyframe and then we're going to move this because this is more right where he starts talking in on the, on the um, timeline for the um, sound. And, uh, and right, oh, right there. So we'll see if we're synced up. So the pattern I'm going to show you now is called the mask maker. It has been created in Paris also, in 1959, but it has been recreated specially for this production. The mask maker for me has different meanings. I will not tell you the story because you will see it. Uh, it is synced, so we would call that good. Um, but you can see the color here is horrible. Um, uh, and I, I removed all of the red out of it in, in uh, uh, when I digitized, I have a, uh, there's an adjustment on the uh, RetroScan to do that. So I removed, um, a, well, a good portion of the red out by that adjustment. And still, there's so much red in this that the, uh, the adjusting and getting a good color out of it would be really, really difficult. It's not impossible, um, but I'm not that great at that part of it. And there, there is a, a program that... Um, that can be used. Let me see if I've still got it in here or not. Uh, it's, uh, it's sworn by by a lot of people, and I had it in here at one point, but the learning curve for some of this stuff is just nuts. And I had a, a, a I mean, I, it took me a long enough time to learn Adobe and uh, the Adobe products well enough to where I get along pretty good. Now I'm using uh, some programs called uh, uh, Topaz. And uh, you can see those down here, these little icons down at the bottom down here. 
Um, okay, I don't have the other one in here, uh, it appears. And I, off the top of my head, I can't remember the name of it. But if somebody's interested in a, a really good color uh, correction uh, program, get a hold of me. And uh, we'll, uh, oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's Black Magic Design. It's, um, it's Da Vinci, Da Vinci Resolve. And I do still have it. I just haven't, I, I, as I said, I, the learning curve for that is even is crazy. But they say that's much better uh, to use uh, versus uh, the Adobe Premiere or After Effects uh, color, um, color correction. So at any rate, so we've got that. Now, now we know where, let's get back to the beginning down here. The sound is uh, correct, um, but because of, let's go ahead and put that on there. We're gonna, all right, so we'll start. You can see all this. There's no way to fix this. Oh, there is, but I'm not going to take the time to do it. And any kind of uh, any kind of um, stabilization that I would do would you, would would uh, make use of these sprocket holes, which are virtually not there because um, they use a, 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 a clear or white um, the uh, white correction tape goes on there. And uh, I mean, just you can see how destroyed those sprocket holes are. And that's what I would be using to register my stabilization uh, through Adobe After Effects. So stabilizing this is gonna be really, really difficult at best. And so um, I've decided not to, uh, as I said, not to use this. But had I decided to do that, okay, so we're gonna say we're, we're, we're um, we've got a kind of a clean part of the film here. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back a little bit Oh, right about there, I think. Now, um, I'm just going to show you for the example of it what uh, what we would do next, because this is not um, because the film is in such bad condition. Let's go. Actually, that's not bad right there. Um, that's all pretty good. Let me. I'm even going to go up here. Well, so much for you here. Okay, and um, we're gonna only do we're gonna do just um, just a couple minutes here, I think, of this. Now I said I'm not going to use the sprocket holes because they're it's really difficult to get anything out of the sprocket holes because your sprocket hole is right there. Well, there's no distinction between the white and the white and the white which is really what we'd use, the contrast uh, would help us. But we can use this area right here or either one of those. So that's what we're going to do. Um, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it first real quick here and you can see, okay, you can see how it's, um, how the, if you watch the film, the film is jumping around and going back and forth. What we want to do is try and get rid of that. Now, this film is slightly warped too, so that's that's another issue. Uh, and uh, let's go. Actually, let's go back about there. And we're going to replace with After Effects composition. And I uh, go over here on the right to uh, stabilize motion. And uh, we have our target right here. And going to take a little bit of time, not much, because we're not doing very much. Well, come on, guys. There we go. Actually, let's come in a little bit with that. Now, I don't know if you can see, let me see if you can actually see what I've done there. Yeah, okay, so you can see it. Um, 
So I've put a bounding box on uh, about around the, this area, and we're going to use that as our stabilization. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit the uh, analyze forward, and it's going to take one frame at a time. And this is going to take an extremely long time for our purposes. So I'm, I'm going to end that, actually, and we're going to go back. Oh, cancel that. Back in here. Undo it, and we're going to cut it down to about half as much again. And then we'll do it. That will take nearly as long. And actually, I'm going to try something a little bit different here. I'm going to try and just use the top part, half of the. Um, let's see if we can just use this because it's it's actually uh, the thing that that takes so long is using such a large um, large area for a target. Okay, that's not so bad. Let's see how that works out. Meanwhile. Um, I have some really cool things to show you. Um, a long time ago, I ran into this, and it's a. This comes from Lockheed. Uh, if you're not familiar, Lockheed Martin is an aircraft manufacturing company that began in Los Angeles um, uh, with a, 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 a man. Uh, well, at least half of it did. A guy named Glenn Martin. Glenn Martin. Um, he started making aircraft at a very young age, and um, on his mother's birthday, he took her for a ride in one of his, uh, in, in what, I guess his first aircraft, or I, I don't know if it was first aircraft or not, but he took her for a ride in his, in, in, uh, his airplane. This is a magic lantern slide. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. This is a magic lantern slide, and it's actually it's made of it's uh, it's made of glass. Uh, the uh, the image was put on one piece of glass, and that um, was turned inwards, and then another piece of glass was put on the backside to protect that image. And then a, a, a tape, a type of tape, was run around the edges. And I've since then, um, when I got this, you can see the cracks in it. Uh, this was in pieces in a box. Well. I put it together best as possible, uh, physically, and you can see here it says um, uh, Glenn Martin takes his mama for a birthday ride. Actually, this is a this is a, he's, this is on her birthday that uh, he's done this. And the extraordinary thing about this is now this photograph exists out there other places, but this is hand colored, and this is the only hand colored uh, one that I've seen. So what I did. And then I put it into uh, through its paces in Photoshop, and I'll show you what that turned out like while this is working. Let's see if I can find. That was a mistake, I think. Um, okay, so this is. This is the, uh, the original image, and you can see the cracks going through it. I'm going to pull you up a little bit here. I'll knock this down where it gets the screen a little bit better. All right, that should do it. So you can see the cracks. There's three. It got it got tagged right here by something that dropped on it or whatever. But it, it uh, or it dropped against something. I'm not sure. But there's three major cracks going through it. And um, so I was able to line it up fairly well. But after uh, running through it with Photoshop, that's the uh, the uh, image afterward. And of course, all the cracks are gone. You couldn't even tell it was there. But I love the I love the job that they did. I mean, it, this looks so the 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 color on the uh, copper tank. I mean, that's that's um, a water, copper water tank. 
um, or, oil, or a fuel tank, I'm not sure. Uh, could be fuel. Uh, at any rate, so um, the, co the color looks so good, it almost looks like it's, like it's really copper. So they, they, were, they did a hell of a job back then, uh, hand coloring. And her hat, the, the green in her hat. And now you get up close and you can see there's a lot of flaws. Um, well, not so much on this one. I've done it with other ones and, and uh, there are some serious flaws. And there's things in this I, that I did not repair. I should have, I should have fixed that and that. Um, and then here's another, well, that may be a scratch. I'm not sure, but there's a, there's a few things I did not fix in here that I should have, I, but I was in a, just a mood to, to repair it as best as possible at the time I had to use for, for the image. But this, well, that's Glenn Martin, that's his mother, and that's, um, uh, he's taking her for a ride on her birthday. Um, so years later, um, Lockheed, uh, Lockheed Martin uh, created, uh, the, started a factory in Los Angeles and uh, we'll go to that. Start a factory in Los Angeles, and um, they where they made aircraft. And this is the factory in Los Angeles. This is World War II, and uh, these um, buses. This is the U.S. Army Recruiting Service Mobile Station Number Nine of Nine of Nine Point Two. Number 9.2 or 9, I don't know, 92. Let me see, it says 9-2, I guess. Um, but, um, but this is the Lockheed Martin factory in Los Angeles. And they were building aircraft in there and, um, and uh, they were trying to get guys to, uh, even got a hot dog stand out there for the hungry guys. And so all these guys, I mean, you got this guy right here, this newspaper and they're waiting in line to join the military. I don't think that would happen these days, except for maybe some of us old guys. We might do it, and very few of the um, very few uh, younger people would uh, think that highly of this country right now. I think, and I uh, don't even want to get into that. All right, so. Um, they developed an aircraft called the uh, P-38. But before there was an aircraft called the P-38, there were two previous aircrafts. One, one of the aircrafts uh, were, was uh, the XP-38, and the uh, second aircraft was the uh, YB-38, I think it was. Um, and uh, the, uh, these are original photographs I still have the original photographs right here. Um, I'll put them up here. But these are the original photographs from, well, boy, I'm, I'm not used to that camera, not at all. It's, I'm using my iPad, guys. So we'll see what's, what happens here. Hi, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, nice to see you again. Um, but uh, this, so these are the uh, these are the original photographs for the XP-38 um, aircraft. Are we back, guys? Okay, I guess we're back. I don't know what's going on with the internet today. Uh, it seems like when it's really hot outside, there's a lot of issues. But these actually these these photographs are from the original XP-38. And uh, the, um, the, as I said, there was only fluid uh, as a publicity, publicity, blah, 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 publicity stunt. Um, and I think it was General Arnold that had something to do with it. But when they discovered that this was going to be a very fast aircraft and, and uh, they wanted to uh, 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 show the world that uh, that uh, what they had um, they decided to uh, do this publicity stunt and fly it from March Field to uh, New York and they did that in just a little tiny bit over like a seconds over seven hours and these are uh, uh, images of them building that um, photograph and J.H. Washburn was the uh, 
a Lockheed photographer at the time. Um, at any rate, so uh, while he's while while uh, the test pilot is waiting to land at um, uh, the, this little airport in uh, let me see it was uh, something in New York. Um, Well, he crashed at a place called the Cold Stream Golf Course, and it was just 2,000 feet shy of the runway, uh, Hempstead, New York. Um, at any rate, so the, the pilot survived, but the aircraft did not. Uh, and it was caused by the, uh, it was a simple thing. It was, uh, he was caused to have to slow down a lot because he was behind another traffic also wanting to land, but they were much slower aircraft. So he had to slow down, and when he tried to speed up, uh, his, um, the uh, Venturi's and the carburetors had froze up, had froze over, iced up. And uh, he couldn't accelerate and uh, wound up uh, losing altitude, probably stalling and then hitting the uh, golf course. The aircraft itself was uh, uh, destroyed, uh, but as I said, the pilot, he went on and stayed with the program for a long, long time. But the uh, military was so happy with the uh, XP-38, normally, you continue on with experimental aircraft until you get to the point where you want to build what is called a Y version. And the YP-38 would have been the, um, uh, intended for mass production. Uh, so so uh, it was a, uh, the Y prototype would be uh, the aircraft that they would use for uh, um, mass production, all the designs, everything already uh, straightened out in it and, uh, and everybody really happy and everything. But uh, as it turns out, um, you would normally use more than one X version, uh, experimental version, and they didn't. They didn't ever do that. So, as I said, that that uh, stuff is from the original, um, the original aircraft. This is a. This was actually from the Skunk Works. The guy that worked there, um, president of uh, Lockheed. Uh, Could you get me some A cell A A batteries? Uh, I'm guys. I got to put new batteries. Nothing wants to go right tonight, so uh, I'll be back in a moment. Put new batteries. Audio gone. I know, but I need batteries. You need batteries. Yes.
Okay, I'm going to have to replace the batteries in my uh, mic here. There's, you know, the thing gives you little or no warning to tell you that, uh, that it's going haywire. So I didn't know that. Okay, sound's going to be off for a minute again. Hold up one second here. I can get that open. Okay, now we're should, we should be good to go. Well, fortunately, I'm not I'm, I'm not embarrassing myself in front of too many people. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what I'm going to do is uh. I want to put this, the camera down here so that uh, I can show you um, some things. This is a photo album from um, someplace on the East Coast, and I, uh, maybe it's in the beginning here. There we go. So this is just a just just a, a, just a, a photo album from somebody that um, it's like all the other stuff I like. It's all mom and pop, old mom and pop stuff. It's my 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 favorite thing. But the, and this is about 1910, and I bring this into uh, uh, the uh, video because of that. Uh, a couple other photographs, but that's a uh, uh, Curtis uh, Glenn Curtis in the year, 1910. Uh, I got a photograph from 1944 here, but then here we have uh, Mayor Mayor uh, B A E H R Bear in Curtis uh, flying in Curtis flying machine, and then we have um, another one over here, Curtis leaving. Uh, okay, so uh, Euclid Beach for um, Cedar for Cedar Point, and I think that's on the East Coast. That's 1911. Scenes at a circus. I'm not sure where that's located at. I haven't. This is a photo album that I I, I picked up about uh, six months ago uh, with that photograph of uh, Glenn Curtis, and I uh, it just got stuck on a shelf, and I just um, uh, was going through some stuff and ran into it this morning, so I thought I'd bring that uh, into the fray. Let me see here. The audio is not. That might be Cedar Point in Ohio. We got sound again, right, guys? Fantastic. Thank you, DJ. Um, if you like old photographs, uh, <laughs> you're going to love this place. I have terabytes of stuff just like this I've digitized over the years. And um, we don't know who they are. A uh, friend of mine, a uh, guy much older than I am, he always called them instant family.
I like those. Lots of detail in that photograph. Clothing, hair, car sticking into the picture. So, um, I made mention of I made mention of this I think yesterday, but we're um, I've, I changed my Patreon site. This is nineteen Easter Sunday on uh, nineteen. Uh, let's see here, nineteen twenty nine. But I changed the Patreon page to uh, reflect uh, a $1 subscription and a, um, and a um, $3 subscription. And the uh, $1 subscription is going to be uh, absolutely no advertising whatsoever on, um, let me see where, we have a, on all the videos that I post to YouTube. YouTube, of course, has tons of uh, those uh, commercials, and I can't help that because I've got to try and um, uh, get funds together somehow. Uh, and uh, so uh, the uh, switching over to Patreon, what I've done is, is that um, uh, all of the uh, uh, videos will be commercial free. Uh, on a, it's a one dollar per month thing, and so you, you you don't have to watch any commercials whatsoever. Um, we'll still have a uh, a watermark in the corner of uh, all of the films, and I can tell you so many reasons why that's necessary. But um, the latest one was about three months ago when um, a gentleman I, that's that's not even what he was a thief on a YouTube. Uh, stole one of my videos, and it happened to have been one of my films, actually, that um, is probably the only copy of this movie in existence. Um, and I took a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, to, and not not to mention the cost of it, but uh, to bring it to YouTube in in a in a way where it can be um, where it can be seen. And uh, so this guy, because I don't put a watermark in the very front, uh, very forward part of it. Um, in the beginning, I guess uh, he thought that it didn't have one, so he, he, got, he took it and he put it on his site, which had only existed for about three weeks, but he already had, I think it was about 40 films on there, and I recognized a bunch of them from other places. And so he was stealing films from other people that didn't watermark their stuff and put it on his site. Well, that means that every, every, everybody that watched it on his site, on his, on his page, uh, would be one less person that watched it on mine. So... That's the necessary part of, uh, I've had this happen before, I had, uh, uh, my, my entire channel was stolen by um, someone from India, so, so anyway, so that's, that's uh, why the watermark is necessary. So uh, for a dollar a month you get to see absolutely no, uh, uh, all the videos, but no uh, commercials, and this is, I have, I'm putting new stuff up all the time, you have to imagine I just started this uh, Patreon thing about uh, a couple months, three, four months ago, I guess, and so I've been trying to put uh, every new thing that I that I post uh, gets a copy of it to Patreon where it's uh, commercial free, and as I have time, I'm going back into my archives and posting new stuff uh, or old stuff as well. Um, uh, for three dollars a month, though, it's two dollars more a month than the dollar a month uh, commercial free. There's something interesting that you might be, you might like. Uh, your monthly $3 subscription will get you ad-free content or the chance to win an interesting and valuable piece of historical ephemera from the Office of Image Archaeology. This is the Office of Image Archaeology. Every two months, uh, uh, a video will explain what the item is and the basic rules applying to the contest. You only need to subscribe here. And every month, send an email to the address in the video along with special codes supplied in that video. Only one email per month per subscription will count more than one will remove all chances for that month to win, because otherwise I'll have people just bombarding me with, uh, uh, with um, tons of emails for more chances to win. But you can get 
more than two chances of win. Remember, you get one, one email you can send in per month. But if you have a friend and they, they also sign up and you put, uh, they put your name in and you put their name in and I get those two emails, I'll cross-reference them and you get an extra chance to win and they get a chance to win as well. So, um, but that's what, uh, what I'm going to do. It's going to start on the, uh, the first contest will begin October 1st. I can tell you right now that the first um, prize is going to be for that, the first contest is going to be a, um, uh, a check, a handwritten check by the gentleman that played the Wizard of Oz in the Wizard of Oz, play, I'm sorry, not, uh, he played the Tin Man in the Wizard of Oz and, um, and he wrote this check to an organization in either Mississippi or Missouri uh, back in 1950 something. And uh, every time I talk to people, I always tell them that proves that the Tin Man had a heart after all. So um, it's a piece of historical mem uh, movie memorability in a way, and uh, that's, that's the first one. That'll go on for uh, six complete contests, so that, that's about a year. Um, and after that, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a kind of a scavenger hunt through uh, YouTube videos. I'll give you clues to discover some particular thing about a, a particular video. And um, if you can tell me what video it's in, then you'll win. And, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll have to fill, figure out the logistics on that because if there's more than one winner, that's going to suck. So I'll, I'll figure something out. Um, uh, the way this will work is that there will be a, um, it'll be a drawing. So uh, I'll take all of the uh, names and we'll, we'll do a drawing on there. Let me see here. Uh, no, I did not go to the Blessed Sacrament School in Gary, Indiana, uh, Miss Irritated. Um, and, and uh, yeah, Chris, it's going to, it, it, it will be fun. Um, I, uh, and it, 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 there'll be really some, some really interesting stuff. Uh, and uh, eventually it'll be, well, it'll be um, stuff like that right there and, and, uh, and uh, this, this uh, uh, photo album. So the, there will be some really interesting stuff. And it'll be, it's, it's not, you know, it's, uh, I need to get subscribers um, because I need to start pulling in um, more funds because I need to replace that. I've got to replace that thing. It's, it's, it's killing me. I, I've got 16 mil, or um, 35, well, I've got tons of 16 millimeter film, but I've also got 35 millimeter film that needs to be. Um, I'm going to take you for a little walk uh, for the heck of it. And um, just have uh, an idea of, let me take this. this uh, again, this is my iPad. Pretty much mobile. And I'm mobile. Um, I'm going to take you, uh, let me see here. This is, this is my, my wife's uh, uh, hairdressing area right here I uh, built for her because I used to be a mechanic and I had a garage and um, in my garage I was able to do all the things that I love to do. Let me turn this on. Well, wrong light. I'm bringing you in here because I want you to see. Okay, that back in there. I'm not having a lot of luck with lights over here. But um, that's all film. This is my living room. That's all film that has to be digitized. Uh, we've got stacks of it back in there, got stacks under there, stack over here. But I've got a, a bunch of film that needs to be digitized. That's, 16, that's all 16 millimeter. But I also have 35 millimeter, and, um, and that's this is uh, the other part of my living room here. <laughs> but uh, um, I also have uh, 35 millimeter and 28 millimeter, and uh, this is something I built uh, out of Magic Lantern slides. It's called um, Yosemite 1931, and there's actually a uh, USB port. In the side over here, let's see yeah, if I can get there. Uh, you can see it back in, on the very bottom of the, the base. There's a USB port there that has a whole bunch of old, really old um, photographs and uh, films that I um, uh, that I've owned over the years. And uh, 
I digitized them and I put it in there for, for uh, to make it kind of bring the past to um, to the present. And uh, that's a, a really cool old calendar. Great Northern Railway, 1838, something. I've, I've done a lot of panoramas and stuff. My wife's doll cabinet. All right, so that's that's uh, that's something else I built. That's uh, I built that out of two by fours. It's um, a railway station uh, that uh, from uh, um, Placerville, California. So okay, okay. So interesting stuff. I hope I didn't lose anybody. All four of you. <laughs> okay. All right. So you can see that I do need to, uh, I, I really do need to replace that, uh, the equipment. It doesn't do 35 millimeter and it does not do um, fuzzy over there. It shouldn't be. That's fuzzy as heck, isn't it? Showing clear here. Well, I have no idea why that's doing that. Guys, I don't know what's going on with this thing. Um, yeah, but it's, uh, can you? It's not very clear, is it? I'm going to continue on here for a minute. And I think what I did a minute ago, a few minutes ago, was I think when I did this, I think I paused this thing. I did, so we're going to continue on with it. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Something is not quite right. It looks really good on the uh, on the iPad, but when I look at the other screen that, uh, that that you folks are seeing, it's not looking good at all. Picture is good. Okay. All right, that makes me feel a little bit better. Generally, my wife comes in and tells me if things are bad or not, so I, I imagine uh, if she's still watching, she'll, she'll let me know. So you can see what's, uh, by frame by frame, uh, we're capturing that one little section in the corner. And you can see where it's kind of... Uh, a gray area right there, that's the how big the area is that this has been moving. All 
right now it's gone way off track so um, we're gonna stop we're gonna stop that we're just gonna apply and that's what I was afraid was gonna happen it was gonna follow the black line on down so we're just gonna apply it because as I said we're just interested in getting a um, and you save it then you go back to Premiere now the very beginning should be a lot better yeah that's a lot better um, and so what happens is, is um, when in the end when we're done uh, with all, all of this uh, motion tracking and everything this is about what you would see and that's really nice and clean and it's going to go out of that in a second here and we'll start jumping again because see right there now if we move this down here because he's moving you don't really notice it so much but if he was just standing still you would see um, that film uh, jittering and back and forth and waving and everything else. So, anyway, so that's that's what uh, the the next step in the process would be. Of course, after we've we've uh, done the uh, sound sync and everything, we we'll do the stabilization. Uh, once the stabilization is finished, we try to. I'm gonna just cut that bad part off. Or that no, let's go back over to here. That's the good part. Okay, we're going to cut this part off now. So, um, now, because we have, the, the, these films are really grainy. Um, uh, most of them are, are very grainy. So, I have a, 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 a plug-in called uh, 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 Neat Video. And so, we come on over here and we reduce that noise after we've, Normally, I would run this through at this, uh, um, at these dimensions, and um, then I would then what, then I would come in and apply this. We're going to build. I'm going to try the auto profile, which actually worked okay. It worked very well this time. So we're going to use the auto profile, and we'll begin. And I think because that looks very, that looks a way overdone. We'll knock it down somewhat. Back up. Apply that. Okay, let's. I'm going to remove move a little bit more of that red. Oops. That red, it's not going to help a lot, but there's a little bit, so it's not quite as bad. All right, so then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to export that. Let's try it again. Well, export media. There we go. Our sequence. Mask, and we'll call this neat. Save that and export it. And um, okay, well, that's going to take a very short amount of time, so that's not so bad. Uh, if you have a, a film that's uh, an hour and ten, an hour and fifteen minutes long, uh, this can take you as long as. Uh, well, I've had it take almost twelve hours, uh, depending on all of the things that I've done to the film. Uh, that it's trying to correct. So that's why I picked up um, this this machine over here, or this uh, computer down here. That's a, a Dell um, T seventy nine twenty workstation, and that's that that particular computer is very very powerful, and it does a really great job. Hmm. 
Now, I don't know what's going on. All I can think of is that uh, there's just something with the uh, with the internet tonight. Uh, this is the first time I've dealt with it, though, Chris. Thank you. Um, but that computer is, is, a, is a very, very powerful computer. But um, I purchased it and uh, tried to put a... Um, I purchased it through through Amazon, actually. And I tried to put a, uh, um, a hard drive in it for storage, and which caused me to want to go into uh, bio, the BIOS on it. And you can't get into the BIOS on it. So Dell sent the guy out here to fix it, and um, and uh, he brought a brand new motherboard, and the brand new motherboard was DOA, dead on arrival. So I'm expecting them to come back out again tomorrow, the next day, and um, we'll see if uh, we actually get a new motherboard or not. What day would you guys think was probably the best day to do these uh, these little things? I did yesterday. This was on Saturday, and that uh, that seemed to work out. Let's go ahead, and we're going to go back in. Now the the uh, new version is right there, and we'll get rid of the old version, and we'll play it. So that's basically the process that each film goes through, and um, and you can spend uh, you can spend anywhere from depending on the size of the film, um, you can uh, uh, spend uh, shoot a day on uh, something this small. Uh, you know, it's a, a old seven inch reel um, up until uh, some of them uh, take a couple three weeks to do. And so I, uh, um, I have a lot of time invested in every, every one of these films. And, uh, I just, I, I wanted to do this because I wanted people to, to understand this isn't something where you just take and copy and paste it onto YouTube. That, that doesn't happen. <laughs> There's a heck of a lot of work that goes into this. And, um, I, uh. Uh, for uh, just for just for giggles, let me give you an idea. Um, oh, I know what I'm going to do here. Okay, just for giggles, we're going to go. I'm going to go over to uh, my one of my cloud drives. This is uh, where I have uh, most of my storage. This is. Each one of these is a um, well it has its own files within. Um, we start, start out with uh, old eight millimeter stuff that I digitized on machines that I built, and then we go on down into uh, 16 millimeter and on uh, again on machines I built, and then uh, also uh, um, an old Elmo that uh, recorded directly from um, from that. But then you go on down, you keep on going, and we run into 35 millimeter slides, and it can be. Well, those are TIFF, and oh, here, let's see if what we wind up with. There can be anything. Um, this is a parade. I have no idea where, but it's in the 50s sometime or another. Signs of the Times D&D &D Buick Company. Uh, actually, that was pretty funny. You got the deer driving and you got two dead hunters on the hood. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, Sheriff's Posse. Santa Fe, New Mexico, I guess. Santa Fe, someplace, New Mexico. Um, but uh, I, I've, it's been so long as Meyer and Meyer, the man's store. It's been so long since I digitized this. I don't remember it. This is the first time uh, I've clicked on it in in a heck of a long time. So, um, each one of these, like I said, each one of these directories has 
something in them. Um, uh, you want Disneyland, 35 millimeter Disneyland. This is 1955 to 59, 62 to 64, and 72 to 73. And uh, so we'll go to the 55 to 59 Disneyland. And these are um, high, defini high definition 35 millimeter slides, so you can really zoom in on these. Kodachrome, good stuff. You can probably tell I, I'm in need of a new monitor too. This one right here is getting, it's got some dark spots showing up in it. Um, well, let me see here. It keeps on going, and then we go into um, uh, some of the years. Uh, here's uh, Egypt and uh, the Holy Land. These were done back in probably the 20s, is what I'm thinking. Oh no, I, I take that back. I, I think it was. I think it was earlier. Let me see here. Well, it's early 1900s. Let's put it that way. Temple of uh, so a lot of these. A lot of these places don't exist anymore. These are the uh, these were removed because of the uh, Anwar Anwar Dam, I think it was, Ashwar Dam or something. So a lot of these things uh, are not in the same place anymore. But that's just a you know I mean, an idea. Uh, it keeps on going. I mean Arizona. Uh, here's the uh, the USS Arizona. Uh, they're going through uh, the locks in Panama. This is aboard the USS Arizona in 1920. I I can't remember the year. As a commander, a ship's commander, and uh, they're crossing the equator. Celebration that they would have, hazing. It was a hazing celebration type thing. Need to look and see what we got going on over here. Yes, the process is, is the same with the eight millimeter. Um, uh, the only other issues, Friday or Saturday, right? You're on the East Coast. Um, okay, so so yeah, no. The um, uh, if we're doing um, if we're doing this. Uh, I'll try and I'll try and start at about 6 p.m. Uh, West Coast time, and um, uh, we'll we'll uh, do it on Friday or Saturday nights. Um, I, I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm going to try and do this at least twice a week, maybe three times a week. So it'd probably be once during the week, and I'm I'm not sure if everybody would catch it or not, but. But these, all these gentlemen were on the Arizona uh, at least before Pearl Harbor, and probably they they had they would have had there's Arizona there, they would probably have uh, been mustered out by the time the Arizona went down. Except um, there's one on here in particular that that uh, um, his name is Harry Joseph Ray. That was my uh, this is actually from my wife. Um, her, her um, grandfather was Harry Joseph Ray, and he's the one that took these photographs. And he was still aboard the USS Arizona when uh, it was attacked on December seventh, nineteen forty-one, and went down with the ship. He's still there. So he 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 knew all these men, and some of them. Uh, this was one of his friends, I, actually, I, I've seen other photographs, and this is a friend of his. And this was, uh, I think all three of these guys used to hang out with, uh, with him, uh, just because I've seen them in other photographs. But, um, uh, let me see what's another... 
Can anybody think of a subject that's uh, that's interesting? You'd like to see something? Um, maybe I, I I may have it. Um, these guys were lost in a, uh, a, a crash in Alaska, and um, I was able to track down um, all the information about them. This was the airplane that they were on. The Enola Gay. That's a piece of history there. Miss Minuki. <laughs> no, that's the first time I just got that name. That's, uh, okay, we'll continue on here. Uh, that's the last one in that picture. Miss Minuki. Interesting. Um, Blackfoot photographs. Uh, this is a parade. According to, let me see, I think it said 1970. Really colorful. Um, I should run this through uh, Photoshop and fix the color in this, and it would be just extraordinary. Yeah, uh, Blackfoot, Idaho, uh, September 7, uh, 1970. So, I have tons of this stuff, and I'd like to go ahead and, uh, and share it with people. Let's take a look here and see. Uh, Ellis Island stuff. I actually have a, um, a movie um, about Ellis Island. I think I've got it posted already, but I'm not sure. Um, Ellis Island. Do I have anything? I don't believe I have any photographs of Ellis Island. Um, but there's definitely on, on YouTube right now, uh, on, on this channel, there is a um, uh, there is a, a movie about Ellis Island. It's, and it's called Ellis Island. Um, a chicken ranch? You can see the dark spots. This monitor's really about had it. This is a Cleveland Air Show. That's Cedar Point. Ah, that's right. Okay, Cleveland, uh, Ohio. Uh, we were just talking about Cedar Point. And it was uh, probably be the same kind of air show years later. Or years earlier that, um, that uh, Glenn Curtis flew in. Stinson Detroiter. World's duration record. I love photographs like this, be able to look at all the detail in the store. Rice, Kellogg's Rice Krispies up here in the corner. Heinz. There's um, uh, Kellogg's oatmeal, oatmeal, I guess it is. Interesting aircraft. United States Airlines leadership. For 75 years, Monarch Foods, the Monarch Foods, yeah, they've been around a whole lot longer than 75 years. Great looking Ford tri-motor though. And I forgot what this is called, but this is a really interesting aircraft, water, land on land or water.
Cedar Point. So, again, like I said, uh, there's just tons and tons of stuff. We're only in the seas, and, and uh, just for that. And it keeps on going down and going down and going and going. And let's see, we're ending with uh, World War One and Two. And um, I, there's tons of stuff. This is a Nuremberg. Um, oh, this is a this is a um, this is a, one of the uh, Nuremberg uh, uh, rallies. Uh, there's um, some folks in here. We won't mention their names because if we do, this uh, may lose. You gotta be very careful about what you talk about on. YouTube anymore, and even show, so I won't even continue with that, down that road. Here's the uh, uh, USS Petroff Bay. This is a, um, well, that's not the Petroff Bay. That's uh, something that's been, I don't know what that is, truthfully. It doesn't say. It does not say what it is. No. These are TIFF files at high resolution. They take a while to come up. Let me fold her. Here's some JPEGs. Let's see if they, if they do. Nothing. Uh, it's a plane that didn't uh, didn't land so well. Uh, yep, yeah, he didn't land so well at all. That hit really hard. I can only imagine what that must have done to his back. Negatives. Aircraft. Yeah, it's all on TIFF. I'd have to put it, I'd have to transfer it over to, or uh, make it JPEG. Um. Well, I guess that's probably long enough. There's uh, not really a, a lot of uh, a lot of folks. Unless you guys want me to continue on, um, we'll end this thing. So I'll wait for a second. If uh, if anybody wants me to continue, let me know. Okay, going once, going twice. Okay, well. Uh, let's see if we can get my head in the picture. <laughs> there we go. I think we got it. There we go. All right, well. Um, my name is George Myhall. This is the Office of Image Archaeology, and um, I try to share history and uh, as much as I can of what this country used to be, and and um, hopefully somebody in the future will get a hold of this stuff and it will inspire them to recreate the America that our um, ancestors intended it to be. Somehow we've lost that. At any rate, um, I want to thank you very much for being here, uh, I do have a Patreon uh, uh, account, a uh, Patreon page, and um, as I said, if you, what we got going here? No problem. Thanks guys for, for showing up again. Uh, that's, I need to get uh, my logistics in here straightened out a little bit better, and uh, we'll make this uh, a more satisfying experience. Meanwhile, thank you so very much for stopping by. Have a good night.